to try and explain the basis of antimintic resistance, I've got um, a few props here, some coloured discs, um, because it's important to understand that it's actually the worms which become resistant to the, the medicines, the wormers, antimintics that we use. Uh, obviously these are designed to kill the worms and within the worm population there are always going to be some that carry a gen some genetics, some genes that mean that the products can't actually get to them and kill them and we call those resistant. Um, now over time the proportion of those resistant worms within the population on a farm will increase because every time that you kill the susceptible worms, the ones that can't withstand treatment, the ones that can will be the ones left alive. So what I've got here are a series of green and red discs for you to try and imagine um, what our worm population might look like. So most people I think will know that within um, the um, genetic makeup um, of, every, of every animal there are two copies of each gene okay so within with each gene you've got two what we call alleles um, so you can split it into two halves and here we've got green ones so this would represent a worm that is totally susceptible it's green if we were to expose that worm to the antimintic it would die as long as we got the dose rate right um, and we administered it correctly, that, uh, that worm would die. And here, this represents the whole population of worms on a farm. So if you're really lucky, you might have 100% of your worms are still susceptible to the particular worm that you're using and you will get a complete kill provided you use that product right. But it's not an ideal world. And on, a, on many, many farms now, worms are starting to creep in that are actually resistant to the wormers um, and these green worms are gradually being replaced by red ones. Now if you only have between 5 and 10 percent red worms on your farm then you're still getting quite a high kill rate and we would say that that product is still reasonably well effective but once that begins to build over time then the number of worms you kill every time you use the product starts to get less and less and effectively you're losing performance particularly in your lambs because if you think you're killing all those worms and you're not you're actually only killing a proportion of them now one of the problems is that if we take that worm population and there we have one that's got 10% of the worms are resistant then we gaily go along because we really don't notice that but over time the numbers of reds will increase to the point where we get here which is round about, this here is 50-50, half of them are resistant and half of them aren't. At that point, and it's usually at about that point, people start to think, whoa, hang on a minute, my worm is not working properly, I'm not happy. I drenched those, those animals and now a week or 10 days later, they're still dirty, they don't look well, they're not performing very well. And it's usually at that point, it's very obvious. Unfortunately, if we let it get to that point, then it's irreversible. There is no going back. We can't go back from there to there. And the reason for that is that because we've got so many resistant genetics in the population, there aren't enough green ones to breed with the red ones anymore to dilute them out. So once we get to that point, it's irreversible. So let's just summarise then. There are three things really that are going to speed up the process of antimintic resistance on your farm and you know, take you to the point where the wormers are no longer working effectively for you. One that we've discussed in some, um, some length is underdosing and the reasons for that and we've also um, talked about how you can avoid underdosing in practice. The other one is where we have these situations uh, where we're moving sheep from um, dirty pasture, dosing them onto clean pasture. We really do have to try and avoid just taking resistant worms onto those clean or low um, challenge areas. And that's, uh, you know, effectively, if you like to think about that, dilution of those worms post-treatment. Um, and we've discussed ways that we can do that. Um, and the third thing is just basically overusing anthelmintics because every time 
time we use one of those products, we are, as we've seen, selecting out all of the green worms within that animal are being killed and we're leaving resistant ones all of the time. So every time we use one, we're increasing the number of those red worms, if you like, those resistant worms on the farm. So we've got to think of ways uh, how we can actually reduce our dependence on them. Maybe no one's wanting you not to use antimintics, but there are times when we probably do use them unnecessarily and we could reduce our reliance on them.